we go on properly and in these kind of questions when you have to use data structures or make data structures or convert data structures let's see what technique or how we actually go about these kind of problems implement a queue using stacks as simple as that the perform the the operations which you perform on a queue which means a push pop peak and empty you have to replicate or get all these of like operations of the queue via using stacks and it is saying that you can use only and only two stacks that's it again there are multiple ways you can use a vector and a pointer also to replicate the exact same queue situation but you cannot use a pointer again vector is same with saying one stack but you are saying that you have to have to use only two stacks no vectors no pointers nothing else that's it so uh, very obvious that we will start with the normal operations we will do we will do all operations push pop peak empty we will do everything so we will take two stacks name anything s1 s2 anything but for the simplicity and you will realize why i named this like that but for the simplicity you can take name anything but i named as input output and this is a queue i'll perform operations on queue and parallel i'll keep an eye on how my operations i have to perform on my stack because this is my input and this is my actual input like actually how it should have happened and this is how my program how i how my how i have to write my program so that i will work on these two stacks now a simple so we just take let's take a simple push operation i'll push a four so in a queue you push the four from the super back okay i pushed a four initially it was empty so and the same way i can just say okay push in the stack because again in the stack you push in from the top in a queue you push in from the back so I am just pushing in from the back in the queue that is a normal operation which in a queue I will perform and the same way to replicate that I pushed in one of these stacks because it is empty right now so nothing matters. Now I will push in 6 okay now as I pushed in 6 again I will push in the queue from the super back now again my in my actual um, answer or basically for my stacks i have two options rather i can push in my six or in my first stack where i push in four or i can push in my push in six in my second stack but 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 um if i push in six in my first stack then i will think of maybe in future what if again i am just trying to optimize my answer but maybe in future what if he asked me to do a front which means the peak he asked me to peak then i will have to remove everything so maybe it is better that i should put my six in the next stack i might think like that but then i will also think okay what if the next upcoming element will come in let's say upcoming element next will come in as seven so i should put in as a in the stack one or in the stack two that's again a question for me because you can see it is put in like it is put in after six in the cube so that was obvious that okay i will not want for my four to get uh, like with other values so i'll just push in here but then the same issue will come here right when let's say four is gone then again you have to remove everything from the stack too so what i thought of right now is to make it simple let's push it only in the first stack and we will handle it later on if something goes bad we will re we will backtrack reverse our approach okay right now then we just push in eight okay pushed in eight we pushed in eight okay great up till so far everything is going good then i ask for a peak now if i ask for a peak so you will you know for sure in the queue you have a front which means the peak is okay the extreme leftmost element he will give a four but in a stack i can only access the top element so if i go and access it, the top element it will be nothing but a eight At, i cannot do that so i'll use my next stack what i'll do is i will take the stack completely upside down it into an next stack which means i'll push in my eight here okay eight will come here then i push in my six then i push in my six then i push in my four now the entire stack has been upside down because i converted or shuffle or like pushed all the values in the new stack now from the new stack i can get the value top value okay it's a four it's a four and then let's say if i get asked the next value which means let's say i pop the first four okay i pop the first four then if i ask the next value it is six it is six well, that's awesome that's awesome right yeah that's awesome but Aryan, um you just did a peak for that you wanted it you wanted this next element which is four so okay now you have got this four now for the next push operation you will have to get all the elements back in the stack one okay but if for every peak push every peak push i will keep on shuffling my element which means for the peak right now i have to get back all the elements to my output and then 
for, for the next push operation let's say for the next push operation are you saying that you will push back all the, of these elements back and then push in the new push element let's say the next push element is a nine so are you saying that you will firstly push all the elements and then you will push in the new element nine um, that is one thing which we can do and that is obvious but this will actually be a very more time consuming operation but if we see a trick we can actually realize one very special trick we don't need to push in these elements back let's see why so what will happen is that you just pushed in all these elements here now all these elements are here and then you can just simply get the, top, the most top element with this with this you never need to touch or bring back these elements because it's i'll show you that how obvious it is that next time let's say you, you did a push operation again you remember that push operation i'll only do in the first stack which is the input stack but Aryan, let's say you want to do a peak again oh if i want to do a peak again i will look at my output stack if my output stack again but Aryan, in the beginning your output stack was empty so okay yeah output stack is empty then you can actually empty down all the stack one elements which is the input stack element into the output stack like this okay top comes in bottom next top comes in next bottom and so on and so forth that seems that seems interesting that seems interesting so what we will do is okay if you want to do a peak or like push again we push this element but if you want to do a pop we will pop from the output stack because output stack has the correct inverted values as in like in the inverted order so i'll just push in from the output stack top and it is the same way next day we, next let's say next day he asked me to pop another element six so i can another pop another element six so you saw everything is actually i don't need to push him back like for every element it is just being it is just bought once in my output stack and then it is being operated on so that is how i can actually optimize my time i i am just operating on every element once pushing in if i want to pop it i'll like pop that element or basically pop the leftmost element so i just have to bring it to my output stack once it is in my output stack it is in the correct order okay let's say let's say if i ask for pop again simply i'll pop six i'll pop six same way um let's say if i do a push again again push operation i only perform on the input stack so i'll push here only and let's say same uh, if i do a pop operation again pop only from the output stack okay output stack output stack and same way let's say the next pop operation comes but your output stack is empty remember the first basic approach input completely empty the input stack into the output stack okay get the element 5 push the element 5 here get the element 7 push the element 7 here and thus you will see now my entire stack is inverted and thus i can replicate that as an queue so again if i just simply invert this entire stack it will become something like this and now i can simply do okay have a top or a peak anything whatsoever you want you can simply do a pop operation on that stack so now you have realized that every operation on an element again if i want to do a push pop peak anything whatsoever if i want to do a pop but i you might say okay what is the time complexity for this operation okay for a push operation i can see i can easily see it is a o of one operation because you are just pushing the element for a peak operation or for a pop operation in worst case you will have to empty down all the elements so basically for every pop operation are you saying the complexity is o of n no because you remember once you empty down all the elements once you empty down all the elements okay for the for let's say a peak basically peak and push both are same kind of operations it's just that in one operation you actually view it and in other operation you actually remove it like view and then remove it so okay removing is just o of one but viewing it actually requires that you actually are in the correct order of viewing it so you are saying that peak or for push you are taking o of n time for every operation are you saying that no because you will see that if this is was the input if this was our input and we empty down the entire input so we we took three elements we completely took the o of n time to empty it into the next stack now from the next stack for every element i will be taking o of one operation so i can easily say that okay i required i required o of n time o of three time which because you remember i had three elements so to empty all these three elements in the output stack i required o of three time for every element one time one time one time one time so i i emptied all the elements now in the output stack now from the output stack for every peak operation i will use okay o of one o of one o of one so in total 
for ev for every peak or pop operation in average or basically in amortized time i'm not saying average in amortized amortized in okay in total all if all the operations combined for all of these peak or pop operations you will be taking o of 2 into n time again for all the operations combined so roughly for every operation it is o of 2 time which means okay once you actually bring it to the output stack and then you remove from the output stack these are two operations Thus, amortized time complexity for all push and pop operation is O of n, and for uh, sorry, amortized time complexity for all peak and pop operation are uh, O of n. As I should say, O of two into n, and for push, it's already O of n itself. Let's quickly have a look at the code, uh, and again, how we optimize it because we realized that whenever I have, whenever I have done a peak or a pop, I don't have to bring in all the elements back to my input stack. I can just make them stay here only and I can just keep on pushing in my input stack itself. Let's quickly see that uh, how we let the code. It's pretty simple. Firstly, we initialize two stacks input and output and now you will come to a reason that why I named it as input and output. Input because here I'm just pushing the elements. Output because here from output stack, I actually do a peak or do a pop operation. Again, pop is nothing but a first a peak and then a remove. That's it. So firstly, in a push, I'll simply push my upcoming element in my input stack. I'll do that. Now for a pop operation, you remember, firstly, I have to peak the, the peak the top element and then remove the top element. So firstly, I will just peak the top element. I will do a peak operation. I'll say, okay, what is the, what is the top element? Now, if my output stack is empty and my input stack is something, which means I will have to empty down my entire input stack into my output stack. So if my output stack is empty, I'll empty down my entire input stack into my output stack. So I'll get the top element from the output stack or from the input stack, get it into the output stack and keep on removing the input and pushing in the output. That's what I will be doing to get in all the input elements into my output stack. Now I can simply return the output stack top element, which is the peak element. From this, I'll get a peak element. Now I can simply remove this peak element because I want to do a pop operation and thus, and thus return the top element, which I removed. That's a pop operation, which actually we do. And you saw the same way we explained the peak, which was already explained inside pop. And for ultimately remembering empty, I can say my stack, obviously my queue is empty only when both these stacks are empty, because it's a high chance. There's a high chance that you remember your, all the elements were in the output stack, or when you have not performed any peak operation, then your, all the elements were in the input stack. So you have to make sure both of them are empty only then your actual queue is empty. Right. Okay, great. Thus, we have realized that our amortized time complexity amortized means, okay, for every operation, for every operation, it will take over fun time in the entire sequence of this. Okay. Push, pop, peak, push, pop, peak, peak, push, pop, peak, pop, peak, pop, like this. Okay. I know. Okay. For all the peak pops combined, it will take O of two into N time. And for the push, it will take O of N time. So I can easily say that, okay, for push pop peak, it will take O of N time only. And that's how we can actually say that our amortized complexity is actually O of M O of N. Cool. Thank you for watching. See you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. -bye. All that was an easy question, but still I thought of that. We should discuss what it has been asked by Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Goldman Sachs. Great companies.